Hello and welcome to episode 19 part 4 of my Worm Unlimited tutorial series. So continuing on with animal husbandry. I know, I know, I've, this is like part 4. <laughs> but you see, I'm actually able to deal now with um, very large um episodes that are what you know that are split into many parts much easier now i don't panic and uh yeah i do get a little um <laughs> a little oh i don't know where am i where am i going with that i don't know where i'm going with that i'm wondering um oh everybody i am officially in the dog house so my little mate that i mentioned earlier up there I don't know where he's gone but I'm gonna to need to catch up with him and build us both a doghouse because of my previous comment <laughs> because of my previous comment of rainstorm nagging me oops I mean talking to me <laughs> so there we go I'm in the dog hall, dog house but you know what she is the best friend I have on this planet and she is I can say, in all honesty, the nicest woman I have ever met in my life. So, there we go. They, I, we only kid around with each other. I'm never being horrible to another person. Never. You know. Uh, so, we just kid around with each other. But I am in the doghouse. And it is official. I think she's left a comment even stating that. So there you go. But I'm waffling and I'm drifting. Because why? You, the reason you came back to watch another episode of me rambling on is because you wanted me to continue making you an expert in animal husbandry. So, let's see. Now we are going to talk about caring for creatures. <clears throat> You'll hear me say caring for animals, caring for creatures. Caring for creatures, I think, better covers it. But, you know, realise I'm talking about the same thing. Animals, creatures, it's, it's just like caring for. Anything that you can tame and put in your pen, you can care for it. So, this then is now going to be about caring for creatures. As you are all probably aware, or maybe you're not aware... But what you can do when you first are plonked in this wilderness and you get your first creature, you can right click on that creature and you'll have an option to care for. The reason I haven't got that option is because, let me show you, if we come out the pen and come over here. And if I examine this horse or simply double left click it says down here horses like this one have many uses indeed they do it is being taken care of by rainstorm blah 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 but that's the important bit I wanted you to see so you can see rainstorm is caring for that horse if we now look at this horse by double click or examine you'll see that you've seen that before this one though, it says it is being cared for by Gamester for Life, myself, my, my good self. Um, so there you go. That's why if I right click any animals, oh well at least I can right click this one and show you. So when you right click on a creature, you'll see there's an option care for. Now while your skill is low, you can only care for one creature. Okay, so that is the creature that I care for and I had to because my life was being threatened by someone who I will not mention their name. No, I won't. I won't mention their name. So I'm caring for their other creature. Okay, so before I start to drift, I better carry on. So you start off by only being able to care for one creature. Then every additional 10 skill level gains. So every time your animal husbandry goes up by 10 so when this reaches 10.0010 I will then be able to care for two creatures so I could care for both of these when it reaches 20.00 so when it reaches 20 
I will then be able to care for three creatures. So every ten additional every ten additional levels to this, I will be able to care for an additional uh, creature. So at level forty you will be able to care for five creatures. So there we go. I'm sure that now makes very good sense to you, even with my rambling and my confusing way of telling you things. Okay, so you're saying gamester, you old imbecile. Why do I want to bother caring for creatures? Well, let me, my dear viewer, um, explain. So, the benefits of caring for a creature. Number one, they will live longer. So when you see a creature like this that says venerable fat bull, basically that means it's on its last legs. It is going to go the way of all good creatures, up and to the sky. So when you see that, if it's an animal you care about, <laughs> sure someone's going to pick up on this. Should have done this bit a bit more subtly. Never mind. If it's one of your creatures that you care a lot about, you will want to care for it. Because it will extend its life. That ball, if I don't care for it, will croak soon. But that's good because we need meat. And some of the other items that we can um, butcher from it. But that's another episode. And it's a very good one. Okay, so. There is also less chance of them dying so that I mean that sort of follows together so there we go that's why that's the main reason for caring for your creature it also has other uses okay I mean there is of course the fact that if you're on a public server and um, oh this is something awful when in worm online okay you go you care for a creature in the early days of caring for creatures when they first added that ability that you could care for creatures if you was um, having a break for a week or two and a part of your wooden fence because it was made when you first started making the video and it's very low quality and it breaks and so there's a gap in your pen and you're off on a break your animals will obviously wander off so you will lose the animal you was caring for of course in worm online if someone's strolling by one day happily whistling dixie or whatever song that they want to whistle and they see this animal that's out in the wilderness and they take the trouble to walk over to it and examine it they're going to see that you're caring for it now that's a big boost to them because they've now got an animal that's being cared for that they don't have to care for and they immediately realize that that animal now will last a lot longer so it's suddenly become very precious so as quick as you can do whatever you're going to do they will have that creature back to their pen <laughs> so it is a little misfortunate some of the benefits of it but you can see there's another reason why someone clicks and uh, finds out who's caring for it or if indeed it's being cared for at all. Okay, let's uh, carry on. All is not lost. And you should realise that by now simply by watching one of my videos. Although you could, when you first start, be mistaken that with hearing all the rambling, thinking all is indeed lost because this fall is rambling on. But it is not lost, because now I'm going to tell you about a way you can stop caring for your creatures if they've wandered off. Oh my goodness, this is such an important thing to know. Whether you play Worm Online, or whether you're playing this beautiful Worm Unlimited that I'm in at the moment, this is a must-have no command. This is pro tip of all the pro tips I've ever spoken so far. This is right up there this is at the apex okay you're saying stop waffling just tell us what the blinking thing is you want to tell us okay okay don't rush me now because if you rush me i'll make a mistake right so you can type a command to stop caring for creatures but it will stop you caring for all of them so if you use this command be aware that all of the creatures that you're caring for 
will will you won't be caring for none of them so say you've got your skill up to 40 and you're caring for five creatures if you do this command you'll stop caring for all of them the command is forward slash stop caring okay that is the command now carrying on with that bear in mind that if you have five creatures that you're caring for and you use that command if one of them is vulnerable like I've discussed already in all probability it's gonna croak pretty soon it's gonna die pretty soon okay so either remember to recare for it or you're gonna get some meat what can I say it's excellent that would be great. You'll be storing it up ready for the cooking episode that's coming up whenever in the year 2056. No, only kidding. Soon. Right, so let me just look at my notes quickly. Now, if you want to stop caring for a specific creature as opposed to all of the creatures that you care for, you simply right click on a creature like I did on that horse remember and it will have the option oh there we go excellent it's got the option care for so if I'm currently caring for that creature and I click again on care for it will toggle it off I will stop caring for it so using the care for you can toggle on caring for a creature and you can toggle off caring for a creature but the reason I told you about the command is because if the creatures wandered off are you gonna be able to right click on it no because it could have probably if it's a creature that can swim like a horse it will probably on the, be on the next island by now or even further away so you know it's possibly gone don't worry about it nothing to fret or sweat about because guess what you're fast becoming a breeding expert unless of course it was your five speed nag and it's off and it's probably at the other end of the continent by now because you did such a good job of breeding it as a five speed and you added all the items to it to make it super fast it's gone it's gone for good and yes you did love it because you put a lot of care and attention into breeding it and growing it but don't worry you can if you've done it once you can do it again nothing in this world this life is worth caring about if it's material it's only people and the animals and everything else that's living that you worry about that of course this is just a game these are just pixels on the screen so you can do it again okay I'm drifting seriously let's get back to it shall we before you switch the uh, computer the video off okay let's see what else do I need to mention Okay, so yeah, that's caring for creatures. That weren't so bad, was it? You thought I was going to ramble on for another half an hour about that. But I'm afraid I've not finished yet because that now just leads us to the next subject. Oh, I did set the alarm, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Cool. Okay, so moving on. Now let's get to feeding your animals. Now, I did mention earlier a little bit but let's now go more in depth shall we because I know you want to that's why you're watching my videos and not wa off watching something else or doing something else you're here because you want thorough information and I'm gonna give it to you now I'm gonna talk about feeding your animals and I'm gonna go through different examples and such like I'm gonna give you another pro tip and um, I'm gonna yes bird I know I'm, I can't help waffling it's just a part of who I am and I'm gonna carry on uh, one thing I want to mention is I am gonna do an addendum to animal husbandry at some point why because there are um, meat eaters in this game um, animals Oh, look at that my crop oh brilliant let me just quickly show you this I know I'm drifting but I want to show you this because it's fantastic notice now when I hover over a crop because I've got my skill up not only does it tell me like it used to that it's untended okay did the most observant of you notice that it also tells me now it's ripe so I know that it's good for harvesting I mean I know you can tell with the graphic 
because you can see the little buds of cotton in it. But look, it actually tells me now it's ripe. So it's just getting cooler and cooler. You know, this is the farming skill. Because I'm on 30 now, how fantastic is that? It's just, I don't even have to have the rake activated. It's telling me it's ripe and untended. So let's just quickly um, farm it. Because I don't want to lose the cotton. It's a precious resource. And it only takes a few seconds. Right, okay, so there we go. Nothing else, right? Good, right. Okay, let's just hope another animal doesn't go there so it's going to starve. Maybe I need to show you that. No, I don't. That's cruel. Right, okay, so back to animal husbandry. I will make an addendum to um, this animal husbandry um, episode 19 parts, okay? I haven't done it now because... I don't want an episode that's up to part 20, for goodness sake. That's gonna, no one is gonna bother watching my episodes. So there we go. Right, so I will do one on a meat eater addendum to this. So for now, let's press on. Feeding your animals. You can feed your animals in different ways. You can let them to simply graze. So I'm talking about pasture animals at the moment, as you can see here. Cows, bulls, sheep etc 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 so you can let them graze you can pile dirt grass piles on a tile to let that have more layers i have mentioned that um let's see what else do i need to talk about or you can manually feed them there are times when you will want to do this just trust me on that how do you do it well let's go over here we will grab one piece of mixed grass let's open my inventory grab one piece of mixed grass we will activate that uh, piece of mixed grass we will right click on an animal and we've got the option to feed so we can just simply click feed down here it says the mature fat brown cow does not seem interested in your food right now yes because it's been busy too busy scoffing my cotton but that's okay I'll forgive it because it's going to end up in my frying pan pretty soon in a... but that is another episode and a very good one okay so that's how you can manually feed the creatures trust me you will want to manually feed them but let's quickly try because i did want to show you just so it can go the trouble is these are all greedy blighters and they've probably been too busy scoffing everything in this pen hmm Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to because we keep our animals well fed. We take care, good, good care of our animals because we appreciate them. Because we know that they're going to all taste good uh, later. No, I'm only kidding. I mean, obviously the sheep and the horse, the young grey rage, we don't have them for that reason. We have them for other reasons. That you will all become aware of. Okay, so that's it. Let's put that bit of grass back because... In fact, no, let's drop it here. Saving me eating my... Um, there you go, a bit of grass. You can eat that now before my pumpkins. Right, okay, so can, continuing on. Okay, now I am going to just. Uh, mm, ba -ba -ba -ba, shall I? No. No, no, no. Let's leave it till I can show it properly. So I won't mention that. It was I was I was going to mention saying about the meat eaters, um, but no, because I'd prefer to have an animal, a meat eating animal here to actually show you with. You know that that's my technique by now. If I can't show you it, I prefer not to talk about it. So okay, I I will skip that. I must remember that I skipped that though at a later date. Uh, right, let's see what else. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, let's give you, let's give you, uh, ah, well, you know what, I'll do an addendum, I will mention it now quickly. So, laying, dropping grass on the ground, I've shown you a few tricks for putting different layers of food on a, one tile. Just to quickly skim over meat eaters, I'll talk about just the dog in fact. Okay, let's say you get a dog, you tame a dog and you put a dog in your pen, alright? 
First of all, I recommend meat eaters, you keep in a separate animal pen to your pasture creatures. Okay, so now, hypothetically, we're talking about the fact that you're going to have three enclosures. One for your farmland, one for your pasture animals, and one for your meat eating animals. Oh, I could think of a million pro tips right now coming on, but let's just stick to the point, otherwise I'm going to just totally drift. With, I'm going to talk quickly, very quickly, about a dog. We'll get to a meat-eating addendum at a later date. A dog. The way to um, keep that fed is you would get a lump of meat, you'd fill it up into many fillets, and then you'd drop that on the tile. Okay? That dog's then going to be very happy. You can eat them fillets. But here's a pro tip. Bear in mind that if you give him fillets, he's going to want to eat lots and lots of fillets because they're not very nutritional. If you take the care and love and trouble to use your oven to make a meal and drop the meal instead, that meal is much more nutritional and it will save you dropping lots of food. So as example, um, let's see, for example, you might feed a dog five fillets versus one meal now for that pro tip i've got to thank my dear bestest old my dear bestest friend rainstorm because she thought of that so there you go she was helping me when i was assembling this all through the night this episode because as you can see there was a lot of information to go through thankfully though i am nearly through it the light at the end of the tunnel is nearly there with me okay so let's finish off this little addendum of feeding animals and mention that there is another form of feeding which you can do which of course is enchanted grass. Enchanted grass is the best form of feeding your pasture animals. It lasts for, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess with Worm Unlimited, for months and months and months. On Worm Online, it will still last you three or four months, but in Worm Unlimited, I'm guessing it will last anything from 10 to one year plus. But of course, I've not had the opportunity to test that yet because that's a hard skill to do. And so it's going to be a while before I can show you that and get to that. So that's another addendum that I'll have to cover at a later date showing you with encha about Enchanted Grass. That's later episode, but it's a good one. Okay, so there we go. Now what I want to quickly do before I call it a day on this episode is I'm going to go over to Wormpedia. I did want to talk on Wormpedia on each part, but you know it would have went to about 10 parts if I did. And I, I think there's only so much you can tolerate from me. I'm testing the boundaries of that toleration. So I'm going to go to Wormpedia now and what I'm going to do is quickly skim through um, the different pages re relating to what I've been talking about <laughs> and there's a lot of pages but I'm only going to go to the three main ones um, okay first of all we started with grooming didn't we way back when I went was talking about that here's some of the messages you can get while tending uh, some the creatures okay so when you're grooming them you'll you'll see you start to tend to animal you'll see you talk to you talk comforting to animal you remove some dirt from the animal the animal gives you a nervous look what did you do now you stroke the animal over the back i'm not going to read anymore because that's in the messages on the wormpedia wormpedia page under grooming brush so go and have a look because it's a beautiful site they've spent they've spent so much time putting this beautiful wiki together is beautiful thank you code club ab for such a marvelous fantastic wiki okay um let's go to the notes quickly notes animals can be groomed after after one real life hour so that's talking about if you groom an animal you have to wait one real life hour hmm i was pretty sure it was 45 minutes so i'm gonna go with wormpedia on that definitely so i'm gonna say I'm so glad I decided to read some of these notes. So after one hour of grooming an animal, after an hour later, you can then go back and groom it again. 
OK, moving on in the notes. The quality of the grooming brush affects your success chance to groom. How fantastic is that? Mine is like so low. Oops, better repair that actually. Getting to keeping good habits, remember. Keep all your items on the zeros, the golden number. OK, so the quality of the grooming brush determines the success rates chance. So if you try to groom it, if it's a high quality level, you will successfully groom it more often. OK, moving on in the notes. Failing to groom animals does not damage the grooming brush. brush. Successes do. So every attempt to, to groom an animal, every failed attempt to groom an animal will not cause damage to your grooming brushes. Only when you're successful will it. I believe that's just the same as fishing, but don't quote me on that. OK, moving on. The creation of quality... The creation quality of the brush is one-fifth of your carpentry skill. Fantastic. So there you go. You see this game intertwines beautifully. So one-fifth of your carpentry skill. Bear that in mind. The quality of the went fibre affects your chance at creating. So it's talking about creating the grooming brush. So the better you get, my farming now is on 31. So I now, when I harvest, I get a harvest quality level of 31. So if I'm harvesting cotton, the quality level of it will be... Come on, let's hear you tell me. So you, I know you haven't fallen asleep or anything else. Of course, it's 31. Okay, carrying on. Last but not least, failure at creating causes 0 0.03 kilograms of weight wimp fibre to be consumed. But I showed you how easy it is to make the brush, so don't worry about it getting destroyed. It doesn't matter. It's very easy to make. OK. Let's now, So that's the grooming brush. Now let's jump to animal husbandry on the Wormpedia. OK, under the description it says animal husbandry allows for the production breeding of new creatures, sometimes with increased quality, without the need to wait for new spawns. So you see why I'm reading from Wormpedia, because it's now telling you even more information that I missed. So that tells you, you know, I do need to use Wormpedia. I do need to read over certain details, because some of them are very important. Let's face it, you'd prefer to hear information from the makers of the game than from some old fool imbecile who's waffling on all the time. And there we are. Characteristics gained. So the skills that you're going to gain are soul and soul depth. So up here under characteristics is soul and soul depth. So you'll be gaining on your primary and your secondary, as you can see. Okay, they're both green because that means they've recently skill gained. The number has gone up ever so slightly, but it's gone up. So that's a good way of getting your soul characteristics up. OK, it says a little more about grooming here. Just let me tell, uh, see if I have to mention it to you. Uh, it says grooming is the main activity which gives animal husbandry skill. Well, I've told you that already. So we've been there, we've seen it, and we've done it. OK, let's carry on. OK, yeah, I've already told you about that. OK, I shan't mention that. Uh, OK, I've mentioned that. Right, let's jump to the notes. Let's quickly read through the notes on Wormpedia for animal husbandry. Neither animal should be hungry. So it's talking about their breeding. And I've already told you about that. Neither animal should be of the same gender. Well... I think that's self-explanatory, really. I mean, are you really going to wake up one morning, come down into your pen, get one ball and try and mate him with another ball? I think not. So you're not going to do that. You're not going to go there. Not in my series you're not going to go there because it don't make much sense because it isn't going to do anything. So there we are. You now understand. That's great. So carrying on on Wormpedia. Some animals require taming 
before being led. This does not apply to the second animal. So if you're trying to, so say you've got animals in, oh dear, oh my goodness. Okay, there's the 30 minute alarm for those of you out there that wanna stop watching. I will continue on. This will be slightly longer episode, but if all of you um, folks out there that are watching this start indexing, you will be doing each other a huge favor. Okay, continuing on. We're nearly done, but I do want to finish this properly. And I'm sorry I'm going over time. Okay, so what this is talking about, I'll read it again because you probably forgot. I've waffled too much. Some animals require taming before being led. This does not apply to the second animal. So what it's talking about, in your animal pen, with all the animals you've tamed and brought in here, okay, when you want to start breeding them, what you have to do, you lead one, you only have to lead one animal to the other animal to be able to start breeding it. Because you know in um, breeding you have to lead them. Well, if it's a creature that needs taming, obviously you can not You can only tame... Oh, I'm jumping ahead with myself really because taming is another episode. But I need to mention this. When you... Oh, Wormpedia, you've got me on that one. Right, so when you um, have two animals that you have to tame, you obviously... Can only tame one creature at a time in taming you can only have one tamed creature at a time as soon as you tame another creature the creature that you had currently tamed will stop being your creature notice oh no that's going too much no that is another episode taming i'm skipping by i'm i've gone through the 30 minutes already no time for waffling right okay let's move on let's move on Females will not breed while they are pregnant. Once the female gives birth, she will not be in the mood for breeding for another 24 hours. Well, for goodness sake, could you? would you? I mean, come on. If you just give birth, would you want to give start breeding again? And like, No, you wouldn't. I'm not going to go there. I'm drifting and I'm going on a very delicate subject. So let's move on. Animals do not have to be fat to breed, only no longer interested in food. Ah, that gets back to me showing you why to manually feed them when trying to feed them, as it says. Grass eaters will typically be in this state after a minute or two on grass crops. Yep, there you go. Age is a factor in breeding. Calves or foals will not breed. Told you that. Told you that already. Neither will young, early adolescent animals. Horses will breed at 25 real-life days old. Harvest. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what that harvest at the end means because I'm too now concerned about how long this video is going to take. Um, but tells you there, horses will breed at roughly 25 real life days old. So there we go, moving on. Preg pregnancy times vary from 5 to 11 worm weeks regardless of species. I've told you that already. Okay, I'm repeating myself a bit here now, so let's just quickly read ahead fast. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, I'm going to read this. It looks interesting. Uh, I mean, it's all interesting. Sorry, don't take that the wrong way, but I'm just trying to save time here and skip past if I've already mentioned it too much. Breeding female animals with conditions such as champion will provide a chance that the offspring will also have that characteristic. I told you this before, I've mentioned it earlier, but I didn't use the word conditions. This is by the makers of the game. I'll prefer you to hear the correct way if I can. So there we are, it's conditions. I called it special, but it's conditions. Okay, so there we go, that's that. Um, but, but let me just check. Done that already. The horse name is determined at birth. The traits are determined at breeding. Hmm, there you go. There's an excellent bit of information. The horse's colour from birth is determined based on one third by the mother and one third by the father and one third by random. Ah, so there's some brilliant information that I didn't actually give you with regards to a co the colour of their offspring. Okay, so there we are. Uh, okay, so 
I would now at this point recommend you to go to the Wormpedia website on animal husbandry because I tell you what if I was to just carry on reading all the information that's here you're going to be here when the sun goes down and I'm not talking about the sun in this game I'm talking about if it's morning where you are you're still going to be here when the sun goes down this evening and I'm still going to be droning on and you won't want to watch any more of my videos so I'm not reading any more okay there is a lot of information on Wormpedia regarding animal hunt husbandry it is a big subject as you now know so if you have further interest in the finer details of like um, trait lists and stuff like that go to Wormpedia it's a beautiful site and there we are I'm gonna call it a day there I'm very very sorry I don't know how much longer I've gone over the timer um, very sorry about that. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.